Hello and welcome to Dr. Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at the AQA A-Level Chemistry course, Transition Metals and the Reactions of the Metal Aqua Ions. So here is my new website, Dr. Clay's A-Level Chemistry. If you're taking AQA A-Level Chemistry and want to improve your grades, come along and check out the live webinars, which we've got here, where you'll get a chat room along with downloadable resources for the event, which includes an oversheet and questions uh, to answer during the sem seminar. And there's also a link to all sorts of uh, course where you'll get all the video content along with here key concept questions for each of the sections in the course. This covers both AQA year two and year one. And then at the bottom of the page, you'll find the specimen papers along with exemplar A-level papers. Just check out the link in the top right hand corner. Okay, so now we move on to transition metal reactions of metal aqua ions. By the end of this, you should be able to identify the two types of reactions in metal aqua ions as ligand substitution or acid base. Using observations from reactions, explain the relative acidity of the 2 plus and 3 plus transition metal ions. Explain the reactions of metal aqua ions with the with OH minus, ammonia, carbonate, and hydrochloric acid, limited to just iron 2, copper 2 aluminium 3 and iron 3 and recall the test to identify metal ions which is one of your required practicals. So first of all what is a metal aqua ion? Well it is simply a metal ion in which all of the ligands are water. So in our examples here we've got six water molecules around each of our metal ions. And it occurs when a substance is dissolved in water. So here we've got FeH2062+. We might be told that this is iron sulfate Aq. And what that simply means is we've got iron sulfate dissolved into water. And the iron here is then bonded to 6 water molecules while well, the sulfate is now separated and is somewhere else and what we have here is the hexa aqua iron again here we've got an example where we've got aluminium um, aluminium is actually quite a difficult thing to dissolve but we might be told that we've got al2 so4 Three, and that this is aqueous and what that simply means is that the aluminium and the sulfate have separated they've dissolved into water and they've formed a hexa aqua iron this is important because sometimes in the exam you might be given and told about something like copper sulfate aqueous you won't be told that you've got the hexa aqua copper what you'll be told is you've got aqueous copper sulfate or copper sulfate that's dissolved in water and they're expecting you to realize that they're really meaning a metal aqua iron where instead of the iron here you would have the copper in the center notice with all of these we've got a two plus charge and a three plus charge so the charge is on the outside and because we've got an iron we also include the structure in a square bracket it's six coordinate, there's six water molecules, and it's drawn in an octahedral shape. The only other thing to consider now, before we go and look at the two types of reaction that we can observe with these, is whether a sample is charged, or whether it's got a neutral charge. Now, all of these hexa-aqua ions here are charged, and if they got charged, then they will be soluble and they will dissolve into water. However, if a reaction occurs and removes the charge and the overall complex is neutral, then they become insoluble and therefore will form a precipitate. And we'll look at this in due course. Tate. Now then, in all of the reactions we're going to look at in a few moments time 
of the hexa aqua ions, we will observe them either as ligand substitution reactions or as acid base reaction so it's important that we know the difference between each one here we've got four examples and we'll look at each of these and just identify them as either one of those reactions the first we've got ammonia and h3 and this is aqueous so this is dilute ammonia and when dilute ammonia is being used the ammonia here accepts a proton so here we're accepting a proton and as it accepts the proton it's acting as a base so this is an acid base reaction i'll just label it as a slash b for an acid base reaction moving down we now have this CuOH6 4 minus now because we've got 4 minus uh, that has already been deprotonated uh, we'll see that in a moment but now if we're using NH3 and generally to get this to react we'd need um, a strong concentration so probably concentrated ammonia here rather than dilute before here we get replacement of the ammonia so the ammonia actually ends up within the complex and we replace the OH minuses here and therefore this is a ligand substitution reaction. The next one ALOH3 H2O3 now notice this is neutral and has got no charge therefore this is a precipitate reacts with OH minus and the OH minus goes to make H2O so going from here to here again we've accepted a proton so we are an acid base reaction once more and this final one here uh, well the H plus here is donating a hydrogen to the substance and therefore we're observing acid base reaction again so these are the two sorts of reactions we need to be aware of the acid base characteristics but also the replacement of a ligand with one of our reactants where we would observe a ligand substitution okay so now we're going to look at the required practical for the metal aquarines and use the results of this to then understand some of the chemistry so the required practical here is a test tube reaction which you may well have seen in school we're well, going to have three test tubes with your metal hexa aqua iron in. So the, what you have to do in this practical, you've got to add some samples of the unknown solution to the test tubes. One, two, and three. So I'm just going to label those one, two, three. Then to the first tube, you're going to add some sodium hydroxide dropwise to the first test tube and then record any observations. Then add to excess recording any further observations. Into test tube number two, you add aqueous ammonia dropwise to the second test tube, then record your observations, then add to excess, finally recording any observations. In the third test tube, you add sodium carbonate aqueous dropwise and observe and record your observations. There, that is the required practical. We're now going to use those practical results uh, to try and understand some of the chemistry for the complexes including copper iron aluminium um, and the iron three plus so the results here for the practical can be seen below and you're going to need to know uh, the colors of all of these solutions you're going to need to know the equations for all of the products the reactions and also any chemistry for the given observations seen let's just look we have here for the copper 2 plus solution in row 1 and then you've got it with OH minus and NH3 excess OH minus excess ammonia and then finally with carbonate uh, we have it for iron 2 so the importantly these top two ones are for the 2 plus reactions and these bottom two ones are for the plus 3 reactions 
in each case the first step here with OH- or with ammonia is always an acid base reaction and they all form precipitates and we know they all form precipitates because they all form neutrally charged species and they all react with the OH- or the NH3 where the OH- and the NH3 react as a base. When we have excess OH- there is no change, so no reaction occurs for the copper, the iron 2 or the iron 3, but it does with the aluminium 3, we'll see why in a little bit. And then when we have excess ammonia, there's no reaction for the iron 2, the aluminium or the iron 3. And then with sodium carbonate here at the end, they all react. We'll use this as our first reference point. We see a ligand substitution for the first two and the formation of a precipitate. While the second two, we observe an acid base reaction and we can see this acid base reaction we see the precipitate and we also form bubbles from these two reactions before we go and explain this observation we're just going to point out key results that you would explain if you were giving any of these in the exam you would say you give the hexaquan was a yellow solution and goes to form a brown precipitate with bubbles the observations are key that you say the color whether it's a solution or precipitate and finally also whether or not any bubbles are seen so those are the three important observations you would need to record for any of these required practical results. We're now going to use these observations from the practical and we're going to explain those for each of the metal 2 plus and metal 3 plus ions um, and we're going to take those in turn and we'll look at each of the equations. So we'll take off the first example the addition of a few drops of either OH- minus or ammonia uh, to the metal 2 plus and the metal 3 plus ions. Well, what we observe in each case is the formation of a precipitate. So they all form precipitates in this reaction. Now, what that tells us is whatever forms must be a neutral compound. And we can see here, I'm now just going to write out the equations for the metal 2 plus here we've got six water ligands and we put our square brackets for a two plus charge and the observation would be with this can either be with OH minus AQ equally it could be with the ammonia and this is a reversible re reaction here and we form the metal precipitate and we simply lose two protons from our waters there and we form a solid precipitate plus two waters. So we actually see a proton transfer. That's for our metal 2 plus. We'll look at the, then for the metal 3 plus. Well this reaction is exactly the same. Here our M is simply representing for the 3 plus either aluminium or Fe3 plus. And in the previous one, it's either copper or Fe2 plus. This one I'm going to observe as if it's ammonia. Well, actually, it's not 2, it's going to be 3. And we now dilute ammonia. Notice that all of these reactions are reversible. We get proton transfer and we form a precipitate. 
So this time, we've now got three waters, we've lost three protons, and we end up with three H2O. liquid. Sorry, not 3H2O in this one, we're using ammonia. So this one we're NH4 plus and that's AQ. So we end up with the ammonium ion and the precipitate. Since all of these reactions are reversible, it's possible to hydrolyze each of these reactions, or in other words, shift the equilibrium back in the other direction by adding H plus to each of these systems. We're now going to look at some of the uh, extra bits of information that we've got here. We'll now look at the specifics here of the copper H2O 4OH2 precipitate here, which is a solid, a blue precipitate. If we add to this concentrated ammonia, in aqueous, then we can form a deep blue solution. And instead of acid-base reaction, we actually observe the reaction here with ammonia and we get a ligand substitution reaction. So rather than a change of protons, we get a change of ligand here, we form just a four coordinate complex with four ammonias and two waters, it's now charged, so this is now a solution, and in this case, because of the other ligands at the time, we would form 2OH minus AQ and the other two waters as liquid. Note this would be square planar in terms of the ammonia and the waters end up above and below. So we end up with something where we've got OH2, OH2 and our ammonias here are around the plane. When we're drawing these as well Still, because we've got a charge, square brackets here and indicate the charge outside. It forms a deep blue solution, as we've seen in the table. Importantly here, um, it's because we're now charged and we've got a ligand substitution reaction. Now, we've seen before that on the addition of H+, all of the substances from the precipitate uh, will go back and form the original aqueous ion. So here I'm showing you the example with aluminium, the 3 plus ion, it's a 6. And the addition of aqueous acid, we can re-dissolve the solid precipitate and reform the metal hexaquion. However, the aluminium is slightly unique because if we add excess OH minus, so this time I'm going to add 3OH minus AQ, what we observe is that the solution will re-dissolve from the precipitate here and we will form an aluminium hydroxide species where we have Al OH4, H2O2, we're now a minus one charge and therefore we're aqueous because we're a charged substance and we reform here an extra water. Sorry I chose this should in this instance only be the one OH minus not three OH minus like I first said. Here we end up with a colorless solution starting from a white precipitate. Now, the reason that we observe this behavior, we've seen it before, is that aluminium in this instance is amphoteric, 
and that means it reacts uh, with both acids and bases and we observe that behavior here with the aluminium hydroxide so we see amphoteric behavior we get a white precipitate and a colorless solution and that's because aluminium is not a transition metal The final thing to observe then from these experiments is the addition of CO3 2 minus, that is sodium carbonate normally in aqueous solutions. So with the metal 2 plus reaction here with carbonate, we form a fairly straightforward metal complex where we form the metal carbonate. Now the metal carbonate is solid, it's now a neutral compound and we form six waters. So here the carbonate has displaced all of the water and we're simply observing a ligand substitution reaction. With the metal 3 plus however we see something slightly different. With the metal 3 plus we observe fizzing and bubbling or we might say effervescence and we also form a precipitate so the precipitate in this case is the metal hydroxy species with three waters. We have two of those. We also form three waters, liquid, and three CO2 gas. The CO2 gas here we observe as bubbling. Now, carbonate here is a weak base and what we observe therefore with the bottom metal 3 plus reaction is we observe here an acid base reaction and this observation gives rise an evidence of the different acidity of the metal 2 plus metal 3 plus ions which we'll look at to finish this lecture off. These however are the key observations that we need to be able to recall from the required practicals along with the specific equations that help us discuss them. So we saw from our previous slide that when we were reacting with carbonates that is a weak base we got two different reactions the 2 plus ions we got a ligand substitution reaction where we formed a precipitate and we also formed six water molecules however with the 3 plus ions and the weak base we observed an acid base reaction we observed bubbling because we got CO2 given off and this was an acid base reaction. Well what that indicates here is that our 3 plus ions are more acidic than our 2 plus ions and indeed we can check this uh, in a couple of ways. We could use also universal indicator or a pH meter would also identify as the 3 plus ions as more acidic. The question we need to be aware of is why. And in order to do that, we just need to think about the metal centers. If we have our two scenarios here where we've got the metal ion surrounded here by waters. And we look at both the two plus ions. We're in aqueous solution, so square brackets and three plus ions and we now consider what the metal does to do this we're going to consider this thing the charge density which is equivalent to the charge divided by the volume of the metal ion now for a three plus ion this is greater than the charge density of a two plus ion and this is important because what this allows is their inductive effect 
draws electron density towards the metal and this in turn weakens the OH bond while strengthening the metal oxygen bond and therefore allows H plus to be released more freely. And if H plus is released more freely, we're going to end up with a stronger acid. And this is essentially why our 3 plus ions are stronger acids than our 2 plus ions, because a 3 plus ion has a greater charge density than the 2 plus ions. The 2 plus ions, all we ever observe, is a ligand substitution reaction occurring. Okay, thanks for watching. You should now be able to identify two, way, two types of reactions in metal aqua ions as ligand substitutions or acid base. Use observations from reactions to explain the relative acidity of the 2 plus and 3 plus transition metal ions. Explain the reactions of metal aqua ions with OH minus ammonia, CO3, 2 minus, and HCl for iron 2, copper 2, aluminium 3, and iron 3. And also recall the test to identify the metal ions. Don't forget to check out my website in the cards at the top right hand corner. And I look forward to seeing you soon. That's all for now.